Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I very, very much hope that this video finds you well and in very, very good spirits wherever you are in the world. And where I am, it is the early morning here, uh, Thursday, August 18th, 2022. And I understand that uh, just a little while ago, the Criterion Collection on its website made its announcement with regard to its planned releases for November 2022. So if it's okay with you, let us share with each other our thoughts and comments and initial reactions with regard to the Criterion Collection's planned releases for November more uh, interest or if you are uh, curious and want more information about what those 2022 November titles are from Criterion, I strongly encourage you to check out the website, Criterion's website, directly for more information, special features, technical specifications, screenshots or pictures of the planned artwork, etc. So, and plus information about other titles as well in the Criterion collection. So please check out the Criterion website directly for more detailed information. But if it's okay with you for now, let us talk about our initial reactions, our initial responses, and always, uh, like with anything, once the item does actually arrive and we have a chance to actually go through it, maybe our uh, perspectives uh, might change. There might be some details that might be different from our initial responses, but that's okay. Uh, again, this is a, uh, just a, another opportunity, a fun time to uh, talk you and I about movies, about this thing that we love, which is cinema, in the form of today, uh, the Criterion's November 2022 announcement. So uh, without further ado, let us go to the announcement itself or the website itself for more information. First up, scheduled for release November 1st, 2022. And this is described as being from the year 1966. And it is scheduled for release under spy number 1157. And uh, 1966 film from the filmmaker Vera Hitlova. And the name of the work is Daisies. Now, here is the uh, what we can find on the Criterion Collection website itself of the cover art, for example, and other information on this work, Daisies. Uh, I encourage you, again, to check out the Criterion Collection website directly for, say, better presentation of, for example, the planned artwork. As you can see, my presentation skills are very, very poor, as always, so I apologize profusely for that, my dear friends, uh, but please check out the website directly for uh, better quality images, etc. But going back to this film, Daisies, and this release or planned release for the 1st of November, wow, this is uh, really, this is uh, phenomenal news. This is absolutely phenomenal news for a number of reasons. So, this work, Daisies, uh, the, uh, the uh, Czechoslovakian work, Daisies, uh, or, or the film from Czechoslovakia, or specifically from the filmmaker Stilova, uh, this has such a, uh, a vivacious and vicious style to it. It has a almost a an aesthetic that is quite uh, uh, surreal, and it also has a an undertone of a type of uh, uh, nuance that could be said to be direct or indirectly uh, very uh, socio-political uh, in a very urgent and important way, but also a very playful way and also a very, uh, uh, I mean this in a positive way, a very cloaked way that's using metaphor and imagery on the one hand to say something or to try to bring forth something that has a, a real currency, a real a biting edge to it. And so there is this mix, a wonderful blend of tones that is almost like, in many ways, uh, this blending of tones can be uh, very, on the one hand, it could be said to be quite almost um, uh, maybe comic and surreal and cheerful on the one hand, but then at the same time, very biting and very um, caustic 
and also quite uh, quite uh, unnerving on the other hand. And so there is this blend of these tones that itself I think is very much uh, in the best sense of the term, a type of, of uh, overall surreal uh, assault on the senses on the part of the viewer. So this is a, I, I am, I'm totally, I am emphatically, emphatically uh, stress how excited I am uh, for this release, Daisies. Uh, it is not the first time to be seen on, say, physical media form. It has been released elsewhere, uh, including outside of the Criterion Collection. So uh, this will be maybe a good opportunity to make some comparisons where, where we can, if and when, or when the actual item arrives and we discuss it here on this channel, uh, if you're interested, of course. Uh, but uh, to have this here uh, in this new planned release, again, for November, under what's described to be a new 4K digital restoration with other uh, uh, special features, this is really exciting. This is very, very exciting news. Um, let me point out to, I mentioned previous releases uh, as an example. There is also this exciting news in the world of Criterion Physical Media. Uh, this set, which is called, which is a DVD set in the series of Criterion releases, which is referred to as the Eclipse series. And this is Eclipse set series number 32. And it's called Pearls of the Czech New Wave. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if you can make that out here, but sorry for the poor lighting, but this is, as I say, DVD sets. There are a number of DVDs included in this set, included in which is this DVD, and this DVD has the film Daisies on it. So this is my way to say that. Uh, you can, uh, we can look at this also as being a, a title that is taking a, a, uh, a film that was included in a Eclipse series and now making it into its own individual release. So this had been discussed, maybe rumored in the past. Will this happen? Will this not happen? Now we see it actually happening here, my dear friends. So in terms of the physical media Eclipse series uh, uh, discussions, this is also a very big news. Would it mean also that we might see other titles, quote unquote, break out of, say, other Eclipse uh, series? We have seen it before, of course. Uh, we have seen it with uh, a work which is uh, known as The Ascent, uh, the uh, uh, Larissa Shepitko work, The Ascent, uh, from uh, several months back, if you recall. Uh, but here's another example of this. So maybe we might see, hopefully, fingers crossed, other titles uh, emerge from, say, uh, uh, Eclipse series sets here, there, and everywhere. Uh, if I had my way, I would have had, I would have all the titles uh, released uh, either individually or maybe uh, have, and perhaps have more Eclipse series sets, uh, DVD, Blu-ray format, or any other format uh, that is agreeable to, uh, to uh, uh, the consumers, of course. But uh, uh, with that being said, of course, I'm still very thrilled about this news of days uh, scheduled for release for November 2022. So once again, for spy number 1157, we have the work which is Daisies. Let me say also that according to the website, the title Daisies uh, under the Criterion Collection's planned new release will be offered under a Blu-ray, a single disc Blu-ray. And uh, so just in case uh, you're interested, just please note that for Daisies and the physical media options. But now moving on, let's go to the next title. This is scheduled for release November 1st, 2022. And this is a film from uh, the year 2000. It's under spine number 147. So in fact, this is a film that already exists in the Criterion Collection and uh, under many versions. And so we have here uh, a planned release or another planned release or re-release, but that's okay because it's a great film. It is a 4K digital restoration version of the film, which is from the filmmaker Wong Kar Wai. Wong Kar Wai. And the name of the film is In the Mood for Love. In the Mood for Love is coming back again, once again, into the Criterion Collection. That's great. That's fantastic for a number of reasons. The film is one that we have discussed uh, on this channel. Uh, so uh, in, when we were discussing, for example, this set, 
uh, World of One Girl Wise set, which was from several months back. And as we know, In the Mood for Love is included as one of the films packaged in this set. So what we are seeing, and this is 4K digital restoration version, of these films. And so what we are seeing here today, um, I understand, is the one of the titles being uh, based off of this set now being released individually. And it looks too that the artwork uh, that is uh, pictured here on the website is consistent with the uh, type of aesthetic artwork packaging that we saw in this earlier set. So uh, bravo for this. We have an earlier collector set, box set, title now giving it given its own individual release we had seen this before we have seen this before with other sets for example some of the ingmar bergman titles found in the huge box set the bergman set uh, found individual releases not all of them but some of them and so i think this is following in that example or trend very nicely indeed so we do have also um, uh, the understanding that it's, uh, according to the website here, it says 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo. Uh, 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 and I, I understand that this will probably be uh, what is going to be released um, uh, for November, newly released for November 2022. And in fact, when you click on, say, other options here, like Blu-ray, It'll come up with the artwork that is currently made available, um, and it actually changes the the uh, the discussion here. It's uh, it's no longer a 4K restoration, but it says restored high def digital. So it's making note of the fact that we're getting. Uh, 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 it's making note of the the versions that are the subject of the particular releases, etc. So, uh, the. Uh, I, I, again, I've spoken about this film in the context of the World of Wongar, uh, World of Wongar Wise set, so I'll maybe leave a link to the, de the video uh, in the description box below if you are interested. I am looking at the special edition, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the, uh, the special features and it looks to my eye uh, to be, uh, I mean, we can do a comparison of the, uh, of the disc. Uh, when it actually arrives with what we see in the uh, the box set, but uh, uh, this is uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll do a comparison when it comes to that. But uh, if you are interested, as I say, you can find the uh, link to the discussion in uh, in the description box below that I made some months back in the context of the box set. So, uh, but uh, so I'll leave my my uh, my comments about the film. Uh, in case you're interested, uh, uh, you can uh, check out the, the video separately. Uh, but in terms of physical media release and in terms of the, the calibration and relationship between box set releases and individual releases and, and the like. So this is a very interesting news indeed. This is one of the most celebrated films of uh, the new century. Uh, this is one of the most celebrated films of uh, from one of the most celebrated filmmakers of the modern era. And we have, and for excellent reason. And it also maybe brings up the hope that maybe we might see other titles in World of One Girl Y set given individual releases. So we can always hope uh, that that could happen. Although um, <clears throat> there might be some interesting discussions that might be had. Again, I've made some references to some of the points that I found to be quite, well, shall we say, interesting in our discussions of World War One Girl Wise Set. So uh, if you are interested in more details, you can, of course, uh, check out those videos uh, uh, on this channel. But, uh, of course, individual releases are always very, I think, uh, good for uh, a number of reasons. Uh, to explore titles individually without necessarily having to go uh, get the entire set itself. Uh, maybe one prefers just one film, uh, maybe doesn't like other films in the set. So uh, if that's the case as well, uh, more individual title releases, I think, are, are of course, uh, uh, preferred. And uh, uh, I strongly encourage them for, uh, if Criterion can, can do that. But here is yet another example. So we saw Daisies and uh, the uh, Eclipse series set discussion uh, earlier, and now we have uh, something very similar happening with this title. Again, scheduled for release November 1st, 2022, In the Mood for Love. Next, scheduled for release on November 8th, 2022, and this is scheduled for spine number 1158, 
and this is uh, it's going to be under a DVD option, Blu-ray option, or 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo option. And this is described as being a film from 2021. The name of the filmmaker is Jane Campion. And the name of the work is The Power of the Dog. The Power of the Dog. So like with many, or perhaps many, many titles uh, from uh, recent years, including 2021. So I have not had the opportunity to watch this yet i know of its reputation i have heard, I, I know of its uh, critical acclaim i know of the attention that it has received and i know very generally uh, what the story is based off of uh, very general descriptions but i don't know anything else uh, i've i've been trying to maybe uh, not know too much about it until uh, planning to watch it and i was planning to watch it uh, uh uh, in terms of trying to find it in streaming services options that are available to me here in Japan. Uh, but uh, especially given its uh, critical attention that it received uh, during, say, award season, etc., in the past year, so uh, or the uh, recent seasons. And so uh, this comes very, very well-timed uh, from Criterion. Uh, so I'm very pleased about that. I, I should note as well that uh, we have, uh, just if we're talking about uh, and so, I'm sorry, j one other thing too before I move on is, uh, so when the title does arrive, uh, I will uh, watch it. And probably I'll save my first watch of the film for the Criterion release. So I'll, I'll, I was planning to do that later uh, when I could, but uh, maybe this will be a good time. So it's November, so I'll save my watch of the film, my first time watch of the film for the November Criterion release. So until then, I, I won't... Uh, uh, oh, I'll, I'll save. Yeah, I'll, I'll save up uh, that uh, that uh, uh, that first time watch energy, in a manner of speaking, for that that moment. So, uh, but uh, I don't want to look too deeply into this because, uh, again, I want to save that energy. But uh, that first time watch energy. But uh, we have a number of uh, features that we will explore when the title arrives. I should also point out too, just from a uh, a type of a, say visual level or or physical media level for a moment. Moment. The artwork looks really, really quite, quite, uh, quite lovely, um, and it reminds me too of the uh, the artwork and design that we saw from a previous Criterion release of a Jane Campion work, also uh, with the 4K UHD plus Blu-ray option, and that is of the piano. So this looks to be uh, an interesting, a very interesting, uh, uh, maybe almost. Uh, 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 maybe a complementary uh, release to that in many ways, of course, one of which being it's the same director. So uh, wonderful. I'm again, wonderful timing from Criterion as always. So uh, looking forward to this immensely. Again, scheduled for release November 8th, 2022 for spy number 1158. This is Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog. Next, scheduled for release on November 15th, 2022, and this is for spy number 1159. This is a set of films that's going to be released under Blu-ray, three-disc Blu-ray set, uh, directed by Andrew Lau Wai Kung and Alan Mack. And we have three films uh, in this series or trilogy, and the name of the trilogy is... The Infernal Affairs Trilogy. The Infernal Affairs Trilogy. So Infernal Affairs is coming to the Criterion Collection Physical Media Catalog. And specifically, we are talking, of course, about Infernal Affairs, Infernal Affairs 2, and Infernal Affairs 3. So that's what uh, we see according to the website. And it looks to, to be described as new 4K digital restorations. Okay, so I don't know... I don't know anything about the new 4K restorations and any detail specifications uh, about those. I, I don't know about that, so I'll have to... Uh, I know the films. I've seen the films uh, many times, 
Uh, and in fact, we have talked about the films before on this channel. I'll get to that mo momentarily. But uh, so, uh, but I don't know specifics about the 4K digital restorations themselves. So we'll have to watch and uh, do uh, what we normally do here, which is try to compare what versions we have before with uh, this new upcoming Criterion release. But in any event, uh, that is also part of the discussion after all. But uh, in any event, we have, in terms of the films themselves, we have these really uh, these uh, electrifying uh, thrillers, uh, uh, police gangster thrillers that are real mind benders. Uh, they go through this real, uh, uh, almost labyrinthine, a maze-like structure of a plot and a character dynamics. And you don't quite know what's in store until you go in. And the more you explore the world, the more you realize that everything is uh, tied together in this explosive high octane way in terms of action set pieces and uh, suspense set pieces that are really quite thrilling and uh, ingeniously constructed uh, and also the the ingenuity comes because also also in the way that that various points are connected times very different points in time are connected uh, and it all has uh, this way of giving us a sense of of either fate or the betrayal of fate and then linking also to uh, maybe uh, a type of you know, transgressions and transmutations and also uh, uh, a guilt and also uh, the idea of double cross betrayal and the idea too of hidden agendas so many hidden agendas here in the infernal affairs brilliant brilliant stuff uh and uh, so exciting uh tony young and andy lao this is oh my goodness uh, and then uh, again uh, across uh, these films uh, we have the first film infernal affairs which really uh, created a type of almost benchmark or landmark or milestone in the context of of uh, modern Hong Kong cinema, uh, crime cinema, crime drama writ large globally. Uh, and then we have very fascinating uh, ways in which that was followed up uh, in terms of uh, Infernal Affairs 2. And I don't want to get into too many details about it if you haven't seen it yet, but it's really interesting uh, just how it turns uh, from what we see in, in Infernal Affairs and then how it's handled in Infernal Affairs 2. And, and I must say that the same comment can be applied in terms of how the subject matter, or shall I say subject matters, are handled when we get to Infernal Affairs 3. So really exciting, really interesting stuff indeed. I know for some people, maybe some films in the quote unquote, maybe I'm not quote unquote, but some films in this trilogy uh, are stronger than others. I think uh, generally speaking, uh, Infernal Affairs, uh, the first film uh, holds up perhaps the strongest uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, general critical uh, reception and acclaim uh, ever since its initial release up to now. Uh, although, uh, there are, as I say, very, uh, very fascinating and interesting turns that we see uh, in Infernal Affairs 2, how uh, time and space are constructed. And I must say the same thing applies uh, in really fascinating fashion for Infernal Affairs 3. So uh, let us talk about these in a little bit more detail when the, uh, when the trilogy, the set arrives. Uh, in the mail. So I'm very excited. As I mentioned, uh, we have spoken about these titles before. Uh, on this channel, I had the great pleasure of doing a project which is called 31 Days of Gangster Films and Police Films from the year 1970 to the present. And one of the films that we selected uh, was Infernal Affairs. And so uh, it was a great time to to watch those or rewatch those and then discuss them then. Uh, and then now we have the opportunity once again to talk about uh, these great, great films uh, in the Infernal Affairs trilogy. So, uh, uh, very exciting indeed. So we should say a number of things too uh, we, uh, about the context of the, this release uh, in the Criterion Physical Media Catalog or the context of the Physical Media Catalog. So we have here what's described as a, a collector's set. Now, this is very important news because we haven't seen a lot of collector sets from Criterion uh, in the year 2022, at least relative to previous years. It's not like we haven't seen any during this. We have seen uh, some, 
uh, World Cinema Project comes to mind, uh, but not a lot compared to previous years. So uh, this is very welcome news indeed. Now, of course, uh, a collector set like this is, uh, you know, there are many versions of collector sets from Criterion. They can come in all shapes and sizes. So, uh, of course, uh, there. this is the announcement for November. Uh, there is still a little bit of time left between now and, say, the December announcement timing. So uh, will there be other collector sets on the horizon? Again, I don't know. But in any event, we have this, which is uh, really, really, really exciting. As I say, high octane, high caliber stuff that is just uh, uh, going so many places in terms of time and space and crime drama elements so infernal affairs so uh, very exciting news and then in the context in the form of this uh, collector set so that's great and then also we have a a wonderful uh, continuation of hong kong cinema that seems to be uh, getting um, uh, more and more uh, releases in the criterion collection here's yet another example and this is a great example this is one of the most heralded uh, examples of Hong Kong cinema uh, from the modern era. So that is the really wonderful, uh, exciting release from Criterion. Again, scheduled for release November 15th, 2022, and the Infernal Affairs Trilogy, it's spine number 1159. Well, that's interesting. We should just point that out really quickly, which is according to the website, it looks like the entire set is given spine number 1159, not the individual titles. So it looks like the individual titles are not given any spine number release as far as I understand it. So um, uh, that's very interesting. You know, I, I don't quite understand uh, all the time the reasons behind what Criterion does. Uh, and that includes the spine numbering. You know, spine numbering in Criterion it has a really long history. For those of you who know the Laserdiscs and, and Criterion Laserdisc spine numbering, you know that it's one of the most confusing things in the aspect of Criterion physical media history, etc. But here we have an example of a set given a spine number, but none of the individual titles given a spine number. I think, incidentally, that also occurred with uh, Once Upon a Time in China, uh, the Criterion release. Uh, it had a spine number and it didn't have spine numbers. For, it had a spine number for the set, but it didn't have spine numbers for the individual releases. Uh, the same was true. Yeah, the same was true for Bruce Lee, uh, his greatest hits, that box set from Criterion several months back. It had one spine number for the set, but no individual uh, spine numbers for the individual titles contained within that set. So uh, we have a similar trend happening with the Infernal uh, Infernal Affairs trilogy. So I'm not sure why that is. I'm not sure uh, I can, uh, you know, one can speculate, one can guess, of course, but again, I don't know the specific reasons. So, uh, But th it's, again, a very minor, minor point in what otherwise is a very major and significant announcement. Uh, it's a curious, maybe it's a point of curiosity, I think, uh, uh, more than anything else, I think. Uh, but uh, it doesn't affect uh, the excitement levels that I have for, again, this release, which is, once again, uh, in this Blu-ray box set, three discs. Uh, and this is for the Infernal Affairs trilogy. Last, but certainly not least, we have scheduled for release November 22nd, 2022. Spy number 1160, described as being a film from 1992. This is the work from Spike Lee, and the name of the film is Malcolm X. Malcolm X, Spike Lee's film Malcolm X, is emerging or coming to the Criterion Collection under, for example, a, an option of the two-disc Blu-ray set, a two-disc Blu-ray release, excuse me, or 4K UHD plus Blu-ray combo, three discs. And this is also described as being a new 4K digital restoration supervised by Ernest Dickerson with a number of supplements, including the documentary uh, from 1972. Uh, so, uh, we, wow. Wow, this is, this is, again... Um, I wasn't at all expecting this. I don't have my finger on the pulse of Criterion rumor news, so I don't know what the recent news might be of, of releases. I'm not at all good at when it comes to guessing this. But uh, uh, be that as it may, I still had no, I had no idea about this 
This is complete news to me, and it's it is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. I remember seeing Malcolm X for the first time. I wanted to go see it in the theater, but I couldn't uh, for some reason. I forget exactly when, but this was back in the day, many, many years ago. So 90, right, early 90s. So I would have been maybe young high school age, something like that. But I saw the VHS uh, VHS rental and uh, this was around the time again during my early teenage years when I was just beginning to discover the films of Spike Lee and so uh, uh, in that mode of say early discovery film like a uh, film like Malcolm X comes along and I watch it I'm just thunderstruck I think thunderstruck is the right word I was caught so wonderfully, I think, off guard by, uh, and I didn't quite know exactly why I felt this way at the time, but maybe if I could try to articulate it now, it might, it might be that I think I was caught off guard by a number of things, wonderfully so. One of which perhaps is the way in which Spike Lee and his incredible sense a cinematic sense, ingenious way of taking these elements which are connected to real life events and real life people, including, of course, at the center of the story or this uh, telling, Malcolm X, or in the form of uh, the great performance by Denzel Washington. So we have these real life events forming the basis or bases of this film while at the same time we have moments in Malcolm X, the work, that are so almost, uh, they're so uh, uh, poetically lyrical and so almost other, um, like they feel like they are truly of a, of a constructed, cinem ingeniously constructed cinematic uh, poetry. Uh, in the hands of Spike Lee. And there are so many moments like this which really give the sense of of this great balance between quote-unquote the real and quote-unquote the uh, other than real. Let me put it that way. And this balancing act is, I think, uh, one of the reasons, too, why there is such a sense of, say, um, uh, emotional uh, uplift and also a type of, of uh, catharsis, uh, many uh, moments of catharsis that occur uh, when watching this film, Malcolm X, for me anyway. So it is uh, very stirring and a very emotional work. And as I say, I think the, the uh, emotional heartbeat comes in the form also of this electrifying performance for the ages. Denzel Washington's performance here. I think this is this uh, is or should be seen as one of the great examples of why Denzel Washington is uh, one of the premier uh, actors of our age. Uh, this performance that he gives, uh, and it spans so many years, and it spans so many uh, arcs of character development and emotional development and resonance. If you know the film, you know what I'm talking about. It goes through so much. The span of, of, uh, of uh, the, the, uh, the, the, these life events. And my goodness, how many events occur and as they're depicted. So, uh, And it's all captured in this brilliant, brilliant performance. So Spike Lee's Malcolm X, starring Denzel Washington, is coming to the Criterion Collection. Again, I don't know anything about the... Uh, the new 4K digital restoration, but I am looking forward to watching this one uh, very much so, or re-watching it uh, very much so. And I know it has, uh, I know of uh, non-criterion physical media releases before, but uh, this was uh, something that I'm looking forward to uh, very, very much re-watching this. This is one that is, um, I, I, I mean, I don't want to get into too much detail. Well, maybe we'll save it for the discussion, but um, uh, you know, there is a, 
There's a very famous moment in this film uh, where sound, or where a piece of music, or music and imagery are combined in a way that is, um, how should I put it? It really, it's one of the great examples of the power of cinema. Let me put it that way. It is one of the great examples that I've ever seen of the power of cinema. And it has this way of showing history while at the same time almost lifting the the written word from off the page in a way that cinema is able to do while still respecting what's the, what's on the page, what is the written word. And it's that balancing act within that moment, again, this really famous moment in this film that is so startling to me. And uh, to think that there is this swirl of both history and art of both real life events and and the the ins the poetic inspirations that occur from those real life events that is happening all within the space of a single moment in time as encapsulated in this film or this moment in film and that's an example that's not the only moment where it happens it happens so many places in this film but we have that moment in particular uh, I'm trying to be vague here because I don't want to I don't want to go into too much detail again. Uh, We'll save those uh, discussions for a little bit later. But it is, yeah, the, that for that and other reasons, this film is, uh, this is, this is, wow. I'm bereft, I'm lost for words. So uh, in, that, in that way, let me then end here and say, schedule for release, November 22nd, 2022. Spine number 1160, Malcolm X. All right, so that is the lineup, I think, for the plan releases for November 2022. So we have, yet again, we have furthering uh, releases, say, uh, in, in terms of Hong Kong cinema. Uh, we have uh, the uh, ever-growing 4K catalog from Criterion in some, not all, but some of the release examples from for this planned set of November releases. So that's also great news for anyone who are 4K, uh, 4K UHD fans. Uh, but it's not, uh, if you are, uh, if you are not uh, looking for 4K options, of course there are other options available in terms of the, in terms of the, uh, the release options. So that's uh, really good news indeed. I should also point out too that, well, speaking of the Speaking of the physical media uh, uh, options, it's not true for all of the releases here and also previously, but the DVD uh, uh, physical media format option is still made available, for instance, for the release of planned release of P The Power of the Dog. So uh, again, uh, it's something to, to uh, uh, watch out for as we go forward with these and other uh, planned release examples. Also, uh, in terms of uh, other things too, the Criterion Collector Set issue of 2022, if we can call it an issue, I don't think we can, it's, it's not maybe to the level of a quote-unquote issue per se, but uh, the, the, the uh, situation of the collector sets in 2022, uh, relatively speaking, not so many in terms of quantity like we've seen in previous years, but when we do get an announcement uh, like we have today, it's going to cause for celebration. I'm speaking, of course, of the Infernal Affairs trilogy announcement. So, uh, very, very exciting news indeed. Uh, fantastic. And also speaking of sets and individual releases, we got two uh, very great examples of that. So we have the World of One Girl Y set, and now the individual release of In the Mood for Love. Great, great news. Another uh, release of this in the collection. So it's getting a lot of love. Uh, Criterion is in the mood for love for in the mood for love. So that's great. And also Daisies, uh, the Hitelovo work, Vera Hitelovo work, Daisies. Again, uh, which has a very deep and profound connection with the physical media history of Criterion uh, in terms of the Eclipse series. So that's that is wonderful news. It's great to see the opportunity to talk about the Eclipse series uh, in, in these recent announcements. And also to, uh, above all else, the film itself, the, the Hitelovo work, uh, Daisies has this impact and power and a type of, 
of, how shall I say, a type of cheekiness that has a real resonance and this balance of many things going on at once uh, in terms of, of uh, comedy surrealism and a type of biting acerbic quality as well. Wow, wow, it's amazing. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mentioned too that this is uh, going to be my opportunity to watch for the first time the power of the dog. So I will save the first time watch for the Criterion release. I'm very, very excited about that in terms of the reputation that I, I know the power of the dog has and I've heard. So uh, very excited. And I've mentioned too about my, uh, the way that the film Malcolm X really uh, profoundly affected me. So uh, I will try to articulate that in better ways when we actually uh, comes time to discuss that uh, on this channel. So uh, my dear friends, that is the state of things for the planned releases for <clears throat> November 2022, excuse me. Uh, what do you think, my dear friends? Uh, I very much love to hear your comments in your reactions in the comment section below as always do you like it do you not like it is it exciting is it not exciting whatever the case may be however you feel uh, your feelings are very important your reactions and your opinions and views are very very important uh, to me so uh, i would be very honored uh, if uh, you uh, would be willing to share with me uh, some of those feelings and reactions and opinions and views and thoughts and perspectives that you have and share. Uh, so if you are willing to, please uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but in the meantime, my dear friends, uh, that's it for now. And so until we meet again, please be happy and healthy and well. And please keep on watching a lot of great, great, great movies. So thank you so much for your time. I very, very much appreciate it. Really, I do. I very, very much appreciate it. And uh, thank you also for the uh, kind words of, uh, of friendship and support uh, during this time, this month of August. I've been moving, so I've now moved to my new place. So this is kind of what it's going to look like. Maybe I'll have to do a little bit of uh, more uh, uh, adjustments here and there. But, uh, but thank you very much for uh, all of your kind words of support and friendship uh, during these past few weeks in particular. I'm very, I'm very happy. So thank you, my dear, dear friends. So with that, I'll see you at the next one. And until then, cheers.